Hello there guys and welcome back to Unleashed the Beast. Today we're going to be continuing to take a look at the Tinker's Construct mod and hopefully this is going to be a very simple and easy tutorial to follow for the smeltery. So guys, if you remember in the last video, we got our mighty smelting book, which tells us how to build the smeltery. Now it isn't the most simple and useful book to follow, but it does tell us that using the smeltery will give us extra metals from ore, and also we can use it to make different casts and patterns to make various different tools and weapons. Now it does give us a list of ingredients what we need to build a smeltery. We need one smeltery controller, one seared tank, at least nine seared bricks, we're going to need at least one faucet and at least one casting table, and then any combination of ten seared bricks, seared tanks, or drains. So that's what we're going to be looking at doing first, is making enough ingredients to actually build the smeltery itself. So what we're going to need is a lot of seared bricks and a fair amount of glass. So we're going to start off by making the smeltery controller which is just made by putting seared bricks around the outside of the crafting table and that will give us our smeltery controller. We're going to do the same thing but this time we're going to leave the um, center block and put a glass block in there. So that gives us our seared tank. So we now have the smeltery controller and the seared tank, which is where we will put the lava to power it. We're also going to need a couple of other things. We're going to need at least one faucet, which is made the same way you would make a bowl in a little uh, V shape. But I actually want to make two of those and I will reveal why later. So I want two seared faucets. I'm also going to make a See a, a um, casting table which is made with this shape a sort of end shape in the crafting table that will give me a casting table I want one of those also if we make a U shape so the opposite to the casting table will give us a casting basin and I'm definitely going to need one of those we're going to take our bricks and go two rows down either side and that will give us our drain but I want two drains and two I have. Now with the rest we want to make seared bricks which is, is it just four? Yeah, so putting four seared bricks in a crafting table gives us a stack of seared bricks and I want as many of those as I can make at the moment so I'm going to make quite a few of them. Okay then, so I now have a lot of seared bricks. I also have some buckets of lava I've got my smeltery controller, my seared tank, two drains, you only need one but I have two, and you need the same amount of faucets as you have drains, and then I have a casting table and a casting basin. It's also a good idea to keep one seared brick spare because you're going to need that later. So let's see about building the smeltery. Now the first thing you're going to need to do is build the base, and the base is built in a 3x3 square, which is why you need at least 9 of the bricks. Now you can actually build it on the ground, but I'm going to sink it into the ground, and there's a very good reason for that which I will highlight shortly. So I'm going to take 9 of my seared bricks and place them in the ground, and that creates the base for the smeltery. Now the next layer actually goes around this ring here, so it's actually a 5x5. Five five. Now this is the reason why I sink the smeltery into the ground, because if I built the base on the ground I'd then have to put some extra blocks down to put these other blocks on. So let's just clear some grass. I'm going to put the controller here at the front. Obviously you want to be standing outwards facing in to make sure everything is in the right direction. So we have the controller. You also need a tank on the outside and that is where we're going to put the lava. That is the power source. And then I'm going to take the two drains and I'm going to put the two drains on this side facing outwards. Now again you want to make sure you are facing in towards the smelter as you place them. The smaller side of the drain, the small hole should be on the outside, the larger square blocks should be on the inside. 
Now we're going to take seared bricks and we are going to go the rest of the way around the outside. So as you can see, I'm actually building on top of the grass. This is why I sunk the base into the ground to start with. Got grass in my way. So we're going to build around there. Now, as I place the last block here, you will see the controller now lights up. This is now a smeltery, and we have the smeltery interface. We've got uh, nine blocks where we can smelt various metals, and that is because there are nine spaces here in the middle. We need to put some lava in, so let's get our lava buckets. And we are going to fill this with lava. Let's get some of the junk out of my inventory so I have the space. There we go. Probably plenty of lava in there. Now, it will use lava over time. There we go. Four buckets. It is full for the time being. Now, two other things that we need to do is on your drains you need to place faucets. Faucets are used for pouring, but before I do that, I'm just going to dig a hole under both of these drains. Just get the dirt out of there. Now, two of the other things I built was a casting table, which I'm gonna put in that hole, and a casting basin, which I'm gonna put in that hole, and I'm gonna put a faucet on each of the two drains. So let's go and have a quick look at the interface. So as you can see, we've got our fuel here on the right hand side. I could put more lava in there, but I would need to put in multiple tanks, which is perfectly fine. The tanks do need to be on the same level as the controller. And the reason I say the same level is because we can actually build it higher and we will do shortly. So what we're going to do is right click on the interface and I'm going to take something like tin because different ores melt at different speeds and the tin is one of the quickest ones. So I'm going to take the tin and I'm going to put nine blocks in there. Now if we actually look you can see that those nine blocks of tin have actually filled up the centre of the smeltery. You can see the progress bars next to each block, these little red bars that are working their way to the top. So we'll wait for them to get to the top and hopefully we will have some melted tin. So our tin is just about done. There we go, our tin has now finished. And if we have a look inside the smeltery, you can see it is now full of liquid tin. We don't want to stand in there because you will take damage from it. But if we right click on the interface, you can see we've got molten tin in here and we've actually got 18 ingots. We only put in nine tin, so we're getting double the amount of ingots, just like you get from uh, using something like a macerator or a pulverizer. So what do we do with that liquid metal once we've got it in there? Well, one of the first things we can do, as we've got uh, at least nine tin ingots in there, we can use the casting basin if we right click on the faucet that is on the drain above the casting basin it will start to pour the tin into the casting basin give that a few seconds to get to the top and then once it's full it'll eventually turn from a liquid into a solid and there we go and we right click and pick that up and we now have a block of tin now we can take that block of tin and we can go and put it in our crafting table and split it up and turn it into nine tin ingots of course, we're left with another nine tin inside the smeltery, which we can do the same with that. Now we've still got nine tin ingots, or nine, uh, yeah, nine tin ingots left in the smeltery. One of the other fun things you can do with liquid tin is get yourself some gravel, and with a piece of gravel, right-click in the casting basin, and the gravel will go into the basin, and then right-click on the faucet, and that will take one liquid tin, and in return, it will give you brownstone or rough brownstone. I'm going to repeat that process a few times and empty out all of the liquid tin. Now you can actually smelt more than one metal at once. Some metals can actually mix together and form an alloy and a good example of that would be something like uh, aluminium brass which is made from three aluminium or aluminium for my American viewers and one copper. There's a couple of others as well but we'll look at the aluminium brass uh, momentarily. But for the time being, I'm just going to take as much of this brownstone out as possible. Now, if you do put in different metals that won't mix together, they will actually float on top of each other in layers. And that's something that I will show you shortly as well. 
So I'm going to carry on doing this until I have nine and I've emptied all the tin from the tank and then I'll come back. Okay guys, so I now have nine rough brownstone. And what do we do with brownstone? Well, it's actually a very useful material, particularly good for building paths. So I've put some brownstone down there in a straight line. I'm just going to line up with it without falling off the ravine. And if I just run forwards, I'm not going to sprint. All I'm going to do is hold the W key to run forwards. And as you can see, as I get over the brownstone, I actually start to sprint. When I'm off the brownstone, I stop sprinting. Go back in the other direction, walking, now sprinting, and walking again. So what brownstone does is when you run over brownstone, you automatically sprint and it doesn't even consume any of your hunger bar. So brownstone is quite an amazing material. So let's move on to the next step and make our smeltery a little bit higher. Okay then guys, now I've actually got enough seared bricks, I'm going to jump up here and make myself another layer all the way around. I was lucky as I fell off the edge. Always a good idea to do this when the smeltery is empty, then you haven't got any danger of falling into the molten metal. So now I have a smeltery that is two blocks high. Pretty difficult to see what's going on in there now, which is why I actually made myself some stairs and some cobble. I'm going to put them on this side, I think. Piece of cobble there. Stairs. Stairs. So we can now get up and see inside. What this lets us do, if we now look at our smeltery interface, we have 18 squares here on the left-hand side. And I could take something like tin ore and fill the 18 squares. In fact, I'm not going to fill the 18 squares, I'm only going to fill 17, and I'm going to show you why later. Now, we could build the smeltery even higher. Now, you can see there's the empty square that I didn't fill. If we built the smeltery even higher, we would just use this button here as a scroll bar so we could see all the rest of the blocks we put in. So, let's wait for those tin blocks to smelt down. There we go, all the tin has now smelted. If we look on the interface, it will tell us we have 34 tin ingots. Now what I'm going to do is very quickly just pour those uh, tin ingots into the casting basin to turn them into blocks. Okay, so I've got three tin blocks from the smeltery, which now leaves me with only seven ingots left. Now, of course, we need nine ingots to make a block, so this is what happens if you're left with some metal in the tank, and it's not enough to fill the uh, casting basin. So this is now only going to have no, uh, seven of the nine ingots in, and it will never solidify. So the only way to get rid of this is to break and replace the casting basin, or go back to the smeltery, put in another piece of the same metal and bear in mind I need two ingots so I only need one piece of ore. When this piece of ore smelts there will be two liquid tin ingots in the smeltery. So let's wait for that to finish. Okay there we go that tin has melted we'll just check and see. Yes we have two ingots. So if we go back to the faucet right click it'll put the remaining two ingots in the casting basin which should solidify gives us our tin block and now we have an empty smeltery. So you now know how to build a smeltery, you know how to turn ore into liquid metal and then pour it into blocks, you also know how to make brownstone, but how do we make a single ingot one at a time? Well it can be done but it's a little bit tricky and a little bit more complicated. The first thing you need to do is make a cast. Now casts can be made from two types of metal. Casts can be made from gold, so let's put a piece of gold ore in there. Now if you can't find any gold, you can also use uh, aluminium bronze, which means getting yourself one piece of copper ore and three pieces of aluminium ore. So I'm just going to wait for that gold to smelt down. And there we go, the gold has been smelted, look at that lovely liquid gold. So if we go down to the faucet that is above our casting table, there's nothing on the casting table. I'm going to right click on the faucet, which will pour the gold. And that will give us one of these, a blank cast. Now, blank casts are used later on for crafting various other items. But we actually need a cast to make an ingot. So let's assume you can't find any gold. What you're going to need to do is you are going to need three pieces of aluminium ore and you're also going to need one p 
piece of copper ore which we'll put in together we can smell everything down at the same time they are hopefully going to mix as you can see we've got our one piece of copper and three pieces of aluminium so let us wait for those to smelt so the aluminium has smelted first and it's this strange pinky colored liquid still just waiting for the copper now and there we go the copper has now smelted and left us with this strange yellowy gold colored liquid now different materials do smelt at different rates that's perfectly normal but if we have a look now at the controller we can see we have four ingots of molten aluminium brass so what we're going to do and remember you can do this with aluminium brass or gold if you're lucky enough to find some we're going to take that seared brick that we saved from earlier and we're going to put that brick down on the casting table and we're going to turn on the faucet and as you can see the faucet pours around the brick and solidifies we can now take that and we have an ingot cast the brick's still there we still have three more ingots worth of aluminium brass in the smeltery so i'm just going to pick up the rest of these casts obviously if i'd have done it with gold I'd have only needed to use one piece of gold, but I'm just doing this to empty the smeltery. So there we go, let's pick up our brick. Let's put these out of the way. They won't stack, unfortunately, which is a bit of a shame. So what we can do now is we can take something such as tin, got a piece of tin ore in there. So let's put the tin in the smeltery, get it melting down. I tend to use tin for this demonstration because tin is one of the faster smelting metals. So let's just wait for that to smelt. Okay, now the tin has smelted, I'm gonna take the ingot cast, put the cast back down on the casting table and turn on the faucet. The faucet now pours into the blank cast and when it solidifies, will give us a tin ingot. We've still got another ingot's worth of metal in there, so let's pour that and that will give us another tin ingot. And this cast is reusable, we can pick it up and we can put it back down. While I'm here, I'm gonna actually show you what happens if you put two types of metal in that don't mix. So I'm gonna put in some tin and some iron and we'll come back when both of those have smelted down. Okay, so the tin is smelted first because it smelts a lot faster than iron and we can see that we now have two molten tin ingots in the smeltery. So let's just wait for the iron to finish what it's doing. It's also worth noting that as you actually build the smeltery higher, not only can it hold more raw materials for smelting, but it can also hold more molten liquid in the tank itself. So that iron's almost finished. It's about there. And there it goes. Now it's difficult to see because they're both grey, but you've actually got two lines here. If I mouse over the first one, you can see I have two ingots of molten tin. If I move the mouse up slightly, slightly darker gray liquid is molten iron, two ingots. So I actually have two different liquids in the smeltery and they haven't mixed together. Now, if I pour, I will get whichever metal is at the bottom of the tank, which will be the tin because the tin smelted first. So I'll get the two tin ingots. And then if I pour again, I will now get the iron ingots. So that's how you use the smeltery and that's how you gain individual ingots. Now there is another useful thing to know about the smeltery. It does work in conjunction with buildcraft waterproof pipes and railcraft storage tanks. So you can use pipes to pump lava into the seared tank to keep it powered, although the lava does last quite a long time. And you can also use waterproof pipes and tanks to pump liquid metals in and out for storage. So guys, there you go. You now know how to build and use the smeltery from the Tinker's Construct mod. There are of course other things we can do with the smeltery, but we will cover them in future videos as and when we come to them. You know how to make individual ingots, you know how to mix alloys and make metal blocks, and you even know how to make brownstone, which is a very useful material for making paths. I hope as always that you've enjoyed this video and you found it informative and entertaining. And as always, if you've got any ideas for future videos, if there's a particular mod item or machine you'd like to see me build and demonstrate, either send me a message or leave it in the comments below and I will add it to the list. So until next time, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.